Guys, thanks for joining us. Um, spending a minute with the news board. Uh, we've got Daniel Harris, we've got Trevor Van Sloot, and Kane Newbegin with us, who uh, had a pretty amazing adventure on Saturday, and they're here to, uh, to tell us all about it in their own words what actually happened. So, um, Trevor has to skip through the boat if you want to kick things off. Um, yeah, so what were conditions like, and what was the lead up to, to the accident itself? Uh, the conditions were good, I was glass out, that's sort of why we decided to, to go out that morning. Um, or well, actually the night before we knew it was going to be good, so we thought we'd go for a fish. So we were out about 7 o'clock I suppose, and just having a bit of a trial out, and we uh, got out as far as we wanted to, and turned around and come back. And um, I thought I saw a bit of a bombing under us, so uh, I went to turn around to go and uh, have a look at the bombing, and I looked back and the, the boat was starting to fill up with water. Right. And um, yeah, after that I'm still a bit of a blur actually. But, yeah, okay. Guys, what do you remember of the of the, uh, the incident? Oh, I remember looking up and only seeing Daniel and <laughs> thinking, I oh, know, where's Tread? So I jumped back under water to have a look, but by the time I come back up, Tread was up and, and I started hurling a bit of abuse, what have you done? And then calmed down and realised it's a long way home. How, how far was it in your estimates, Daniel? Oh, as far as Wentworth is, I suppose. Yeah, yeah about 5k out or something like that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so, uh, you had life jackets on, on board? Yeah, yeah we, had, we had life jackets on board. We had one out. The others were stuffed underneath the bow of the boat, so we couldn't try to reef them out, but we couldn't get them out. And how quickly did the, uh, how quickly did it take the boat to sink? Straight away. Really? Yeah, yeah, as soon as we come out of the water, it was down, it was under. Oh, okay. So just the nose floating. Um, so, at what stage, uh, once you, uh, you were in the water, you had some, uh, some flotation, I believe a bucket you were clinging onto as well. Um, so, how long did it take you for you to make the decision that one of you needed to, uh, to swim back? I think probably about half an hour. We said we'll stick together and, and try to fight it out together, but we realised we weren't going anywhere. Trevor and myself were on a life jacket and we weren't going real quick. And uh, Digo over there was on the bucket and he seemed to be moving a bit quicker than us. So we sort of made the call there and then one of us had to bite the bullet and go. And how was that How was that decision once you've made that? How were you feeling once that decision was made that you were the, the one to, uh, to head back? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, don't worry. I just yeah, concentrate on getting sure, get some up for these boys. And did you see any um, any boats passing by while we were waiting? We could we could hear a few, yeah. um, but we couldn't actually see any sort of waving hats and stuff like that. But oh, who knows how far away they were going on sound? And the only one we really saw, we saw sail away late in the afternoon. We see the sails coming, and then the fishing boat that came and picked us up. Ty and Ty and his mates came and picked us up. So yeah. I hear during the wait, uh, you had a pretty bit of a close encounter as well. With, uh, what could have been a tiger shark? Can yeah, you spot that? Yeah, yeah. I kept putting my face under water because it was burning, and I didn't have a hat. Go to the old mate over here looking after Trev. And um, yeah, just kept uh, wetting my face looking under, and so I was a bit scared as well, seeing if there was anything under there. And yeah, big tiger shark was just, just cruised on by, just swam underneath us. And how big do you estimate it? Probably four or five metres. It's fairly big, so that's incredible. Yeah, just finally gave up then. We yeah. started making jokes with Trev. We started just joking about dying and yeah, just stupid stuff. We just thought it was over. Throwing yeah. rocks. Yeah. <laughs> so Daniel, can you tell us, um, all, all, all of you guys, can you tell us the, the exact events, how the rescue happened? Um, from the time, obviously, you left and the time that you were spotted, I believe, by, by a helicopter. Um, can you tell us a bit more, clarify, actually, how the, how the rescue happened? Well, yeah, I got pulled out by the lifesaver, about 50 metres out from, from Fort off. And um, ran up and uh, rang the cops, and they came down. And um, he sort of he organised for a helicopters, and seaplanes to come over. But uh, it's probably I don't know an hour before he said I had the helicopter inside of them. Yeah. So. so we did. We done um, the helicopter link was the one that come from the Great Barrier Reef, the Quicksilver. And it circled us five or six times, so we knew that they'd, they'd seen us. We're waving the hats and waving our arms and yelling out and stuff. And then it sort of took off. And we were wondering if the old boat to be here soon. And oh, it's about an hour or so. We we're like, where were, where were the boats? Because there's no, no one had come, come along, sort of thing. And um, this fishing boat just came out of the blue. And we jumped in and said, "I'll make the, grab your radio. We'll call up um, 
um, the Coast Guard and he goes, I haven't got a radio. And so he goes, no, we're here. And he goes, oh, we just saw you waving. Uh, so jumped in and sort of tried to, and went for a bit of a squirt up towards the beach to see if we try and find Daniel. And uh, well, we couldn't find him, so we ended up going back into the, into the, into the um, break ramp and the police were there and said that he'd been in for probably an hour and a half or something like that, so yeah. And how did you feel, Daniel, once you got to, got to shore? We, you would have been quite concerned. Obviously. I was pretty worried, but the boys still burning out there, yeah. Funny, worry about, because we were worried about how he was going. We didn't know he, if he was out there or, you know, so we try not to think about it, but well, we can't help it, you know. Whether he needed a stinger or a crop or a shark. Mm. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Everything was going through our head like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no doubt. How pleasant of a time to think about it, sort yeah. of yeah. Was it about six hours from start to finish? The uh, about yeah. seven, a bit over seven for Trevor and myself, and I think about six for Daniel. Mm. Yeah. It's probably about nine. We don't, we don't even know what time we went in. About nine-ish, I suppose, and then I think it was about 3.30. After four, it was a bit after four, we end up getting back to boat camp, so yeah, okay. they are about to go. So, any uh, fishing trips planned from here on in? <laughs> no, I, was, I was meant to go today, but <laughs> yeah, good idea. just didn't want to get sunburned. Well guys, thank you again for spending a minute with the news board, it's greatly appreciated. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.